This video goes with section 26 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course, and will introduce you to infinitives and their use. Hansen and Quinn does this on pages 50 to 52. So you remember from our introduction to verbs that verbs, most verb forms, have these five different qualities, tense, mood, voice, person, and number. And we've talked mostly about the indicative so far. But now we're going to talk about infinitives. And the word infinitive comes from Latin, and it means that they are not limited. What does that mean? Well, it means that they aren't limited by person. And so when we do infinitives, we're not going to have to think about first, second, and third person. And they're not limited by number. So when we think about infinitives and use them, we're not going to have to think about number, singular, dual, or plural. And what infinitives are, technically, are verbal nouns. They usually mean to verb, which is the same as the English infinitive, and they usually complete the meaning of some other verbs, um, but they do lots of jobs. We're going to learn one use of the infinitive in Unit 2, and then you'll learn others as the course goes on. So first, let's learn how to form them. The present infinitive active, of course, comes from the first principal part. And you take the stem from the first principal part and you add the ending. And notice that it says ending. There's only one. We do not need separate endings for first, second, and third person or for singular and plural because it's an infinitive and it's not limited by those separate ideas. So we only need one ending. And that ending for the present infinitive active is ain. So let's get our example verb luo. And we're going to go to the first principal part and take the omega off and have our stem lu. And we're going to add our new ending ain. And then I will tell you that the accent for the present infinitive active is recessive. So we have a long last syllable, and so we can only go back to the second to last syllable, which is the only syllable we have left anyway, and so we get luane. And that means to be verbing or to verb more than once or habitually because with tense for, the, for infinitives, what you're thinking about is only aspect, and this is continuous aspect. Time doesn't come into it with infinitives and tense, only aspect. So the present infinitive has continuous aspect, and these translations, to be verbing or to verb repeatedly or habitually or something, um, indicate that continuous aspect. The truth is that English seldom emphasizes the difference between continuous and simple aspect, with infinitives, so you'll often be saying simply to verb. Some contexts you will definitely want to say to be verbing, but you'll need a context that's really specific about the ongoing nature of whatever the action is. Let's go on to how to form the aorist infinitive active. So everything aorist and active comes from the third principal part, and again, because we don't need person and number, we only have one ending to learn, and that ending is I, alpha iota. So here is luo. We're going to go to the third principal part. We're going to get the stem from that without the augment and without the alpha at the end, and that's loose. And we're going to add the alpha iota. Now here, this is the first verb form that you've had where the accent is fixed. It must go on the second to last syllable. First, remember that alpha iota at the end of a word counts as short for the purposes of accent, even though it is a diphthong. So we have a short last syllable and a long second to last syllable here. And you know that because Hansen and Quinn has conveniently put long marks on them for you. Uh, but this upsilon happens to be long. So we have a short last syllable a long second to last syllable, and the requirement that we put an accent on the second to last syllable. And if you remember, that adds up to the circumflex rule that means that we will definitely put a circumflex here. 
Now, you might notice that there weren't any other syllables for the accent to go on, but even if we were working with Pideo Sai, the aorist infinitive active of Pideo, there you see the third principal part stem with our new infinitive ending on it. That second to last syllable is also long as a, a diphthong with the short alpha iota at the end. And even though there are three syllables there, this has to be fixed accent on the second to last syllable and it's going to be the same circumflex over that long second to last syllable. Now, if your second to last syllable is short, as in pempsi, you're going to have to put an acute there because you have to have a long vowel or a diphthong to put a circumflex over, and epsilon is never long. So here we see with the aorist infinitive active of pempsi that you have to have an acute on the second to last syllable. It's still fixed there on the second to last, but because the vowel is short, it has to be an acute. Now, the aorist infinitive active means to verb. It's simple aspect, and you simply say to verb. But as I said before, usually, even with the present infinitive active, to verb is going to be a perfectly good translation of both the aorist and the present infinitive. But you need to be aware that the present infinitive can indicate continuous aspect in a way that you need to emphasize in English. Let's think now about how to use infinitives. So I've said that the default translation is to verb, which is the English infinitive, and that can be quite convenient. And so let me show you a couple of examples of the infinitive in English. We have to air is human, she knows how to sing, and I order you to sit. These are just a few of the things that infinitives can do in English. Into air is human. What we have is a verbal idea acting as the subject of the sentence. So it's doing its verbal noun function in she knows how to sing. The infinitive is completing some of the idea about what she knows. And in I order you to sit, the infinitive completes the meaning of the command of I order. And this is the one that we're going to use first in Greek and in Hansen and Quinn, where the infinitive completes the meaning of some other verbs. What you're going to discover as we go on and learn new words and new ways to express things in Greek is that every time you're going to need an infinitive, I and Hansen and Quinn will tell you that you need an infinitive in certain circumstances. Here with kaleo, you need an infinitive to specify what it is that you or somebody else is ordering somebody to do. So, ton homeron keleoete ton adelphon paideoen means y'all are ordering or y'all command Homer to be educating his brother. We have the main verb with person and number. Y'all are commanding or y'all command and then the direct object of whom we're commanding Homeron, Homer, there in the accusative. And then what we are telling him to do is in the infinitive, paideoen, and it is to be educating. Now, it's a verb, so it can have its own direct object, which is also in the accusative, tona delfon. We could also translate this as, y'all command Homer to educate his brother. It's the present infinitive, so either meaning could be correct in English, and context will tell you if you need to emphasize the continuous aspect uh, that you can see in to be educating. Now we could do this also with an aorist infinitive, ton homeron keleoete ton adelphon paidel sai. And here it's definitely simple aspect, so y'all command Homer to educate his brother is completely correct. For now, we're only really going to use the infinitive with the verb kaleo, but in the future, you'll learn many more ways to use the infinitive, and now you know how to form the present and aorist active ones. Go and practice 
forming and recognizing them in the drills, and then enjoy reading them in more complex Greek sentences.